It can't be that bad, oh, 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 it can't be that bad. My name is Alejandro. And my name is Christian. And we are the hosts of the show. It can't be that bad. Or ICBTB. This is a movie show. Show about movies. This is a movie show. This is a movie podcast. This is a movie podcast where me and my co-host here uh, defend films no matter how bad they are. Uh, however, this film, uh, depending on where you look, is either like perfect or like terrible or or right on par with the franchise. Yes. So it's all dependent on like what kind. What are you looking for when you watch this movie? And objectively, this objectively this is the best film of the franchise that I've ever seen. Definitely I, of the ones that America has made. Uh, yeah, so far, and like, yeah, we're not going to compare this to any of the ones that Japan Which has made. I don't even; those are those do suck. <laughs> so from the sixties and seventies, or even the fifties. The fifties, yeah. Um, but let's stop blue balling them, Christian. Yes. Welcome, baddies. Hello. Thank you for coming. Please yes. check out our merch. We have new merch. We'll get to that later. Mm-hmm. Um, we watched a film called. Godzilla, Godzilla versus, versus Kong. Kong. And if you have HBO Max, then good for you because it's the perfect time to have that streaming service. Or if you're close to a movie theater, it's even more of a perfect time to go to that movie theater because this is the perfect film to return to the movie theaters for. Yes. They are currently showing this in IMAX at the veranda, and I wanted to see this so badly, I was two seconds away from seeing it, mm-hmm. uh, and then the person I was with was like, actually, left turn to... Nobody. Also a good film. Check out Bob Alvin Kirk. You shooting a gun. It's great. But if you're going to watch anything on the big screen you, again. Yes. If you need a big return, you go into an IMAX. This is it. You got to watch these two big monsters in action. These the two right big way. legends. Yeah. We should go... We should go see this in theaters just to do it justice. Oh, I would love to. Well, I tried my best to mimic going to the movies uh, when watching this because i really wanted to watch it the right way i didn't want to just watch it like on low volume in my bedroom on your ipad on my ipad or on my phone so i watched it on a big screen tv with noise canceling headphones and it was the way to go yes and i'm not gonna lie i took a few in my pen <laughs> and seeing king kong Punch Godzilla in the face for the first time, an impeccable CGI. Was was their fight scene actually kind of brutal to you? Oh yeah, like it was their final fight scene, and we will get there. Uh, was actually like to me like, oh shit, they're really hurting each other. Like, yeah, you could see the pain each other in up. Kong's face. Oh, when we'll we'll get there to that final scene, but even in the first fight scene, immediately, uh, yes, they kind of make us wait a little bit, but yeah. as soon as the action starts. Oh, you're in it. It doesn't stop. They really blue ball you for this because for like about, about 30, 30 minutes. 30 to 40 minutes. Yeah. But, that, but you know what? That's just enough character development and, 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 and character attention because there's these are two different films that were made separately mm-hmm. that they're forcing together. Well, what and they, they have did in actors the first, from both. What they did in the first themes. 30 minutes was give us enough exposition if you didn't watch the movies leading up to this. If you if, didn't watch you the rest ki- of the MonsterVerse mm-hmm. movies. If you only kind of know King Kong. And if you only kind of know Godzilla, the first 30 minutes are for you. For sure. Basically. And you, you wait a while, but when they first fight in the water... When King Kong is being transported to Antarctica so that they, he could travel into the center of the earth, oh my god. Once you see Godzilla's dorsal plates on his back. Dorsal as, fin. Dorsal fins, dorsal plates, whatever the hell you want to call it. He is just traveling at full speed toward King Kong. It's crazy. The music in this movie it, it's it's placed so well and it builds up the anticipation and it, it, it's just so exciting it's uh, the the music adds so much to it the the sound design of this film is Impeccable. incredible the problem with action films and big budget films like this is they never get the recognition from the oscars that they deserve because the sound design in a film like this mm-hmm. There's no, there's no other film that's doing sound design. There's how other, what fully artist is doing buildings collapsing while Mecha Godzilla is yeah. body slamming Godzilla and King Kong is butt fucking him. Yeah. 
God, that's a way to put it. Is that not what happened? Or did we see different movies? <laughs> uh, did you were your your glasses smeared a little bit? Mm, I did jack off. Oh, that's what it was. I don't think you were watching the right movie. I just got excited. That wasn't King Kong that you were seeing. No, but it was Godzilla versus Kong. Yes. And it, if it pleases the court. It, it does please the court. I would like to present the itty bitty nitty gritty. Go ahead. Godzilla versus Kong was released in the year 2021. And has a rating of PG-13. It has a runtime of one hour, 53 minutes, which is a choice. And we will get to that in a second. Uh, it has a rating of 6.6 .6 out of 10 on IMDb, a 75% on Rotten Tomatoes, a 59% on Metacritic. It's got a a an A, just straight up A, from CinemaScore. Uh, and it's it's really it's really all over the place with ratings. You know, it's fluctuated ever since its release last week. By the time we were recording this, it, it had just come out last week. Yes. And when it first came out, the numbers were pretty high. And slowly it started to kind of stabilize into what it is now. Do you think what studios are buying these ratings? Because we've seen that now a couple of times where ratings are very, very high. And, and un, to me, almost, almost undeservingly high and i know we're a podcast based on building movies up yeah but there have been at least two or three movies in the most recent past where i'm like i don't know how they're this high well like we've said before it depends on who's watching it so with this movie in particular if you're watching it in the lens of a kid or like you know or of nostalgia if you're if big you fans, turn your brain off essentially and if you want to just be visually stimulated then this is the movie for you but you know you're not you're not getting the greatest plot you're not getting you're not seeing these fleshed out characters learn a lot about life in you're this. not learning anything no but you are seeing godzilla and king kong fucking go at it uh, i much much for the reason why i like the fast and the furious franchise mm -hmm. i enjoy this movie because i felt like every dollar that i paid for yeah is on the screen <laughs> yeah just you, so much money. So, so much, much money was put into this. So much like... And done well. Yes! You know what was crazy uh. is that when I watched... After I watched this, I immediately went to YouTube <laughs> and I typed in uh, King Kong versus Godzilla 1962. The original one. Where they're both in body suits. Like luch luchador Basically, costumes. it looks like it was Halloween. Two two kids during Halloween beating well, the shit out of each other. And what I learned was that the, the Toho company... Who Toho, yes. Originally started Godzilla as like a parody thing on Japanese television. Which was all about like the Matty Morphin Power Rangers, mm -hmm. big monsters coming to... Like Godzilla was actually... A, originally a parody on that and mm -hmm. then it became like a real thing and then america saw it and was like this is actually kind of scary you know my dad growing up in the philippines he was born in the late 50s and so around the 60s the movies that he would see in the theaters in the philippines would be movies like this he was telling me about the first time he saw god uh, godzilla on, on the big screen and he thought it was the greatest thing in the world because you're going to appreciate what you have at the time. So that just makes me think with these phenomenal special effects that we are seeing right in front of us, how much better is it going to get? Because we're seeing its progress just within its decade. You know, the first Godzilla movie of this monster verse came out in 2014 and that already looked incredible. But I'm pretty sure if we were to watch them back to back, we could already see the slight differences that had improved in the last seven years, right? Who knows, man? Has it really been seven years? Seven years since that first uh, Godzilla movie with Brian Cranston. Yeah. And Millie Bobby Brown. Uh, Millie Bobby Brown wasn't wasn't in that one. That was uh, 2019 uh, with Millie Bobby Brown. Okay. Because okay. seven years ago, Millie Bobby Brown was, was in- Was 10 the, years old. That's why I was like, she, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, she wasn't 10 fucking, years old. We recorded an episode about that. No, there's yeah, there's already four- uh, by the way, yeah, that episode never came out. So no. don't go scrolling through our library to find it. It was one of our uh, our, our test episodes, and maybe if you're a bad no, enough, no, body, no, 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 I went too, too, too deep into, into the Nazi conspiracy theories, and you know what? Hey, guys, we're all learning on this podcast. The moment that Alejandro heard the two words "Hollow Earth" in that Godzilla movie, he was like, "Oh my God, Nazis!" 
I'm going to talk about Nazis on this episode. And you talked about Nazis on that episode. And it was funny. It was really funny. But, you, you know. Thank you for it, making me feel okay about it. It wasn't funny. It's very hard to make Nazis funny. But you know what? Well, it's not going to be. Maybe now we could talk about it a little bit, as we are right now. But it, for. I, I have a feeling you're going to add a clip of that episode. I don't know if Do I can have? find it. It's somewhere there. It's, and you got to find that fucking baron zemo computer yes you know what i'm talking about oh my hp computer it's in my <laughs> brother's room right now i can easily get that <clears throat> synapses coming at you right at you kong and his protectors <laughs> undertake a perilous journey to find his true home along for the ride is gia an orphaned girl who has a unique and powerful bond with the mighty beast. However, they soon find themselves in the path of an enraged Godzilla as he cuts a swath, swath, swath of destruction across the globe. The initial confrontation between the two titans instigated by unforeseen forces is only the beginning of the mystery that lies deep within the core of the planet. Let's just dive deep into it, man. I, I do wish um, the final fight scene took place in the middle of the earth, um, but we'll get to that later. Uh, so this film opens up in... Um, On Skull Island. Not Pensacola? No. I'm pretty sure it, it opens up in Skull Island. We get to see... It doesn't matter. This is two movies smashed together. It's honestly yeah. like you have a Godzilla film on Channel 6, and you have King Kong on Channel 4. And you're just switching back and forth. And you're flipping back and forth, and then somehow you accidentally get to Channel 5, and they're both fucking there. I wish I lived in a world like that. You're telling me if uh, The Simpsons is on Channel 5, and... Uh, you know uh, what that is? I also have uh, Taxi Cab Confessions on Channel 7, if Whoa. I go... <laughs> The Simpsons Taxi Cab Confessions episode is actually maybe the secret crossover of the century. <laughs> that would be crazy. Just like Marge and Homer in the backseat of the taxi cab, like blowing each other and just like, yeah, I actually, uh, Bart's not your son. Wait, does that happen in Taxi Cab Confessions? Are you not familiar with Taxi, fa taxi Cab Confessions? Only seeing it, watching it for five seconds, and I'm like, why is this person like... Talking in the back seat, there's nothing happening. Is oh, that if, what happens? If it's people, if it's like a couple that he picks up, it's always like, "This is my brother." And it's like, wow. Okay, okay, that's crazy. That's okay. taxi cab confessions, bro. I have so many questions, but I'll ask you after the episode because that's not what this episode. I about. think you should just watch Taxi Cab Confessions. Uh, maybe, maybe. I think HBO took off all How of their. How did we get here? I, I, the the whole crossover conversation. Crossover. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, That's what this movie is. Yes. This, this movie starts off with uh, Bobby Vincent singing some doo-wop song. You see Kong in his, doing his everyday thing, waking up. and Living only, on Skull Island. Living on Skull Island, only for us to find out that he is in... He's contained. Yeah, all of Skull Island has a... Essentially, a, a, like... It's like a dome. A, a football stadium built over it. Yeah, it's, it's what Truman... Uh, Jim Carrey's Truman in the Truman Show was living inside of, right? I think it was a spoiler called the White alert House. if you haven't seen. <laughs> he said it's called the White House. Yes, Harry Truman lived in the White House. Uh, yeah, that Jim Carrey when he played uh, Harry Truman. That movie. I would, I would go into all of the debt to watch Jim Carrey play Harry Truman <laughs> just in a biopic. All of these ideas that you that you would actually really like. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, I wish I was a better writer. <laughs> Um, okay, so Kong wakes up and he knows that he's in this island. Although, that being said, the people reacting in the jail, essentially, mm -hmm. are acting like this is the first time he's ever thrown that log at the window. You know that Kong's done multiple things to try to break out. Of he this did place. it so casually mm -hmm. that it's like he does it every day. Yeah. Are they fixing the windows daily for Kong? They just there's have no way. incredible technology, I think. Yeah. I mean, there's no way they're fixing it. Maybe they just left that tree lodged in there that he threw into we're the making, wall. We're making mistake number one getting too deep into the details. We are asking questions uh, yes we're supposed to be providing you're not allowed answers. to ask questions when you watch a movie about kong and godzilla no you're not supposed to dude it's about the fight scenes and we're spending five minutes on this opening scene um this but, is guys we make mistakes for you 
Yes, so you don't have to make them in your life. Just enjoy the fucking film. So Kong has a little girlfriend. Um, I want to call her a little girlfriend. Not a girlfriend, a little girl, comma, who's friend. a friend. Yes. Uh, who's also... Yes, she's deaf. She's hearing impaired. The actress herself is actually hearing impaired. She comes also from a whole family of, of oh, deaf people. I didn't realize that. And yes. she's the last of uh, the native people that lived on Skull Island that we saw on in that movie, Kong Skull Island. And I, there were people on that island? Yeah, man. You don't remember? <sighs> they they were like Inca people, right? They had like, not like, they had like paint on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. They were, they were essentially a tribe. I get that Skull Island mixed up with the King Kong, Peter Jackson King Kong, no, it's, which has nothing to do with this film. Has No, nothing at all. Which I kind of, I kind of, I kind of wish it did. You wish it did? You didn't I like, like that one. I like the Peter you Jackson watch, Kong. You yeah. watched Kong Skull oh. Island, though? Yes, yes. With Samuel L. Jackson. Mm-hmm. Yes, I And did. John Z. Riley. Because that was a and, solid one. And uh, Loki. Uh, yes, Loki. Uh, Tom Hiddleston. And Captain Marvel's in it. That movie was fucking dope. A lot of spiders. Or uh, spider-ish things. Yes, uh, there is... I didn't like the spider-ish scene. Something I want to talk about are all of the titans that exist in the MonsterVerse. Sure. Because there is just a slurry of them, which... But are the ones we see in this one, Titans, aren't aren't supposedly... There's only two Titans in this film. Um, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, it's just Godzilla and Kong, because Mecha Godzilla is not, not a, a titan. natural and, Titan. And Godzilla killed all the... It, all the other Titans. killed all the Titans in Godzilla, King of... Uh, not uh, all of the Titans in... Let's talk about it. So there's Godzilla and there's Kong. And then there is Mothra, which we saw in the 2019 Godzilla movie. Dead. Yes. There's Rodan that we saw in the 2019 Dead. Godzilla movie. Dead as well. Uh, there's some... There, Muta? Uh, Mutos. M-U-T-O, which stands for Massive Unidentified Terrestrial Organisms. And there's two of them. And the whole plot of, uh, the I think, the 2014 Godzilla was... Oh shit, these two Mutos are gonna mate and they're gonna create a bunch of Mutos. And so Godzilla killed them. Wasn't he gonna mate with Mothra? Who? Godzilla? No, Muta. No, no. Mm, I thought that's they're how they filmed They're that. different. Mothra was in the 2019 one. And Mothra was a friend. Did you know Mothra had. Mothra was. And Mothra was like Godzilla's girlfriend. Kind of. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Mothra had her own movie in the 60s. I did know that. Which is crazy because Mothra's. Pretty popular, weirdly. Well, that's why they have Butterfree in Pokemon. Did you uh, know that? Did the, what? <laughs> Butterfree is based on Mothra. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Like no. the, the cuteness of Mothra is what helped them design Butterfree. Really? I don't know. Oh, okay. I was about to believe you. Hey, dude. There's a connection there. Pokemon's Japanese, Toho is Japanese, and Toho created Godzilla. Hey, you know what? This is why people believe me. Man. Um, um, the, the crew of this film... Um, the main crew of this film is Alex Skarsgård. Yes. Uh, J. J. G. Jun G. J. I don't know what you're saying right now. The deaf little girl. Gia. Gia. Yes. And Rebecca Hall, who plays her somewhat mother. Doctor Eileen, who takes her in. Jane Goodall. Yes. And she's my favorite, actually. Out of all the characters here. Well, I think she's really pretty. Yeah, oh, yeah, she's pretty. She's pretty. But you know what? I was doing the entire movie. What? Punching myself in the dick because I couldn't remember where else I saw her. Where else? Do you know? No. The Town. Oh, with Ben Affleck. Yeah. Oh, the heist movie with yes. Ben Affleck. Good one. That's why you yes. like her. Yes. She kills it in that one. We also have, uh, what's her name? Aza Gonzalez? Is that her name? Yeah. Elisa. No, I don't think it, it's an L in there. We don't learn much about them like we've we said before. We don't need to. And we don't need to. Really, all we're all we're here for is... Two things, God. Three things: Godzilla, Kong, and Mecha Godzilla. So let's talk about the first fight. So yeah, King Kong's getting transported. Yes, the first fight scene takes place. So they're they're transporting Kong, and he is chained to an aircraft carrier, which already seems like a bad idea. Oh yeah. Just did they not see Peter Jackson's King Kong? First of all, poor Kong. He must be hurting with those chains give him something comfy on that carrier he's knocked out they have him 88 percent sedated <laughs> which is sedated Huge. with what and also why 88 percent sedated if you 88 percent sedated somebody they're 88 percent dead you're dead i mean it's because he's so big right it depends what they're sedating him with um 
it, and I, I know I, it has nothing to do with it, but in the Peter Jackson film, they're able to use chloroform to knock him out. You're kidding. Is it was it chloroform that they used? Yeah. Oh, I don't know if it's chloroform. I don't think it's chloroform in this one. But he wakes up a little bit. He wakes up, and as he's waking up, Godzilla is doing his best Jaws impression. Oh, yeah. And dun, swimming dun, with his dun, dorsal dun, fin dun. out and destroys an entire, like, uh, fleet. Nemitz Smith class ships. We'll have a, a Navy man on on the next episode in the next few weeks or so and and hopefully he can explain the difference of the ships but these are big ships yeah these are big boy ships but this is big godzilla and godzilla himself is a big boy well and king kong is a big boy king kong grew over 230 feet in this film yeah so apparently <laughs> since since the first movie skull island since skull island the one that came out in uh, 2017 he grew because john c Riley, 40 feet yeah there, there's so many. What this movie's really good about, what what fans like us for, you know, comic fans book like fans us. for like, uh, you know, the DC universe. There are a lot of Easter eggs or a lot of small little details that you need to pay attention to for all of this to make sense. Sure. Or you just, you know, shut the fuck up and enjoy the movie for the fights, which is cool too. Definitely the second one. But if you dive deep into it, you know, like there are de- John C. Riley in Kong Skull Island says that Kong is just an adolescent in that movie. That was 40 years before this movie took place. He says he lost his parents and he's still growing. And that's why he's as big as Godzilla now. Godzilla also looks really big. Big hips, Godzilla. Dude, Godzilla's thick. Godzilla female? No, boy. Doesn't Godzilla lay eggs? I, I don't know. I, I don't think so. In the Matthew Broderick one, doesn't he lay eggs in Madison I Square Garden? I don't refer to that oh, Godzilla Oh, you don't for like anything. that one. I don't like the B- Matthew Broderick Black Godzilla. Mark, huh? Yes, that's Why? not. Why? Well, it's just because that Godzilla looks nothing like what Godzilla should. Really? It looks I'm, a lot like Jurassic Park. It's it's just a big ass futuristic lizard, in my opinion. Interesting, and he doesn't do atomic breath in that one. He just like walks through New York. He just whips his tail and breaks buildings and whatnot. Is that not more realistic than Atomic Breath? It's a Godzilla movie. Mistake number one yet again. We're asking questions. That being said, though, there it is super ridiculous. But then there are super like ramifications. I don't mean to jump to the final fight, but when King Kong tries to do the classic jaw ripping open move that he does in like mm-hmm. every film he can't do it because the atomic breath burns his fingers and like as it should and you see kong like look at his fingers as if his hand is now burnt and so it's like there's a lot of like um physical ramifications kong gets his shoulder dislocated and he relocates and it he back has to knock it back in and like you see the pain kong almost cries twice in this film and i've almost cried three times in this film well what this movie what this movie did well, I don't even know if I want to call it well, but like in the trailer in the it movie didn't. itself, it it shoots it and it tells this story so that we are on Kong's side and that Godzilla is more of not the villain, but more of the antagonist, right? I think um the twist is that Godzilla isn't actually the villain. Mm-hmm. The villain is actually Mecha Godzilla. Yes. Um but yes, I, I do think we said before we started recording though. I would like to see a sequel to this film, but not a sequel that takes place after this timeline. I want to see what Godzilla is doing at the same time. Yeah. The right? Perspective of Godzilla. Because a, a lot of there's a lot of criticism about this movie in regards to it's there's just not enough Godzilla, which I'll have to agree with. There is very little slim to none. You'll see Godzilla here and there. Whenever there's a fight, of course Godzilla's gonna be there. And other and they than don't that, hide him. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, he's either swimming or he's, you know, I don't know, he's sleeping somewhere, right? Very Kong focused. I, but that's why I want to see what he's doing. Yeah. Is he planning? It's possible. Well, the difference between what, how we see Kong and how we see Godzilla is that we're able to be sympathetic or like empathize with Kong because you you see it in his face. He, if Kong's sad, Kong is sad. If he's mad, he's mad. He can also tell us in this film because mm-hmm. Kong knows sign language. Yeah, Kong. A very advanced species. And that's completely separate from his size and is able to survive in any environment. He learned sign language by just watching people do it. He watched this little Asian girl do it. Do it with homegirl. Yeah. I don't even know sign language. I know. Thank you. And that's that's about it. That's all I really know. And I used to think thank you was just blowing a kiss. But apparently everyone I was trying to blowing thank a you. kiss to, I was just thanking. It's, it's actually from the chin down. Didn't you ever watch? That's why I was fucking up. Blue's Clues? Yes. 
Thank you. I don't remember that. I part. also know the Washington Memorial. What? Oh, that. Oh well, now I know. <laughs> Learn something new every day. You're welcome, America. Um, I do think that if Godzilla was alive, he would beat the fuck out of Kong. What do you mean if Godzilla was alive? Like if this was real. Oh, okay. So if this was real, Kong wouldn't stand a a a, a one a one second because Kong is doing this. Kong mm-hmm. is like an MMA trained yes fighter. Well, let's lay it out. He does some like he does Superman kicks and well, like that's punches. Kong had to survive buildings. on Skull Island, dude. Is that how we learned how to UFC fight? There's a, I I think so. You figure like, it out. He's like body slamming and like dude, he's Kong- doing. He is throwing him against the ropes and like clotheslining Godzilla sometimes. Like, Kong how do is, real gorillas fight? Kong I want to know how real gorillas some, fight. I, I tell you, the the most, not like this. Kong does not act like a real gorilla. The closest Kong acts to acting like a real gorilla is when he puts down his battle axe mm-hmm. and breaks up the ground like a gorilla. That's the most gorilla acting he ever does. Also, that's yes, Donkey I, Kong from Super Smash Brothers. Yes, dude. it 100% is. Yes, I did just say he puts down his battle axe because Kong unlocks Mjolnir from the fucking depths of the earth and mm-hmm. has like a mythological Godzilla based bone axe. It blew my mind when I found out that that axe was made from Godzilla shafts from an ancestral Godzilla dorsal fin, man. So great. A dorsal fin, that axe was able to charge up from the core's radiation and just become super strong. From just from the Earth's radiation. We haven't even talked about the hollow Earth. I'm kind of honestly, I'm scared to bring it up. Oh, because you think you're going to go deep into a rabbit hole about but this? But they do a good way of like giving us a fun hollow Earth. Yes, this they one's a fun a, hollow this Earth. This is a fun hollow Earth. Yeah. Very similar to like Journey to the Center of the Earth with That's Brendan Fraser. That's what I was Frazier. thinking, right? Yeah. Very... Very similar. <laughs> oh my god, is that gonna be the next tie-in? Like Ooh. Brendan Fraser is Brendan Fraser Alex Skarsgård's brother that died? Yes, <laughs> it's possible. Is is that Journey to the Center of the Earth? Is that Universal? Is that Canon? Uh, <laughs> what about the Will Ferrell one? Is that Canon? <laughs> They're we're in the monster verse and also universe? and also didn't Dwayne the Rock Johnson do a journey to the center of the earth as well? I think he did. These are things we could look up. So which one of Will Ferrell, the Rock, or fucking Brendan Fraser are the older brother of Alexander Skarsgård in this film? Uh, not Pick the Rock. One. For I hope it's the Rock. Uh, yeah, someone's adopted. I want it to be the Rock. Brendan Fraser or Will Ferrell? I want it to be Will Ferrell. I want it to be the Rock, but we both know it's Brendan Fraser. I hope so, at least. <sighs> I'm sorry. Let's talk about the actual movie instead of what I wish could happen. Yeah, I'm getting. I'm out of breath I'm super now. Super excited. More excited about those hypothetical tie-ins rather than the actual movie. Oh, isn't, that the, isn't that my life? So, yeah, the, uh, my favorite part about the whole Hollow Earth thing is... That Apex creates these vehicles, the H... They're heaves. The Hollow Earth... Aerial vehicles. Heaves. Yep, heaves. And they have enough power in them to light up all of Las Vegas, is what they say. Of course, which comes in handy later. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll talk about it. Um, these heaves, though, they they make two of them? Three of them. Something like that. Uh, and they're not just anti-gravity flying machines. They're also like fully equipped, weaponized, like Iron Man ships. Mm-hmm. They, well, they have everything. They have to be prepared for it all. It, one of its main features is the fact that it could withstand the gravity reversal that occurs when you journey to the core of the Earth. Which apparently feels like you're bungee jumping if the bungee cord was attached to your small intestine. Oh, God. Which... They make a big deal about it in the beginning, but then when they come back out of the center of the earth, it doesn't seem like it was that big of a deal. No, it, the way... It was suddenly, they're suddenly super normal. The way they depicted it is that the center of the earth is not that far away from the surface of the earth. <laughs> On the way out. On the way out, it was On just On the way like, in, they had to go through a black hole. Yeah, which was crazy. The way they depicted that was insane. Beautiful. And then Kong finally gets there, and they have an entire ecosystem. Untouched by humans. Yeah. For millennia. Imagine seeing that. I thought I think they're way too calm for what they saw deep oh, inside of there. 
there there should have been like they're like oh this is the only power source we're gonna get there's clearly untapped potential on a million fronts yeah in this hollow earth that we could be imagine that you could bring people there I don't know. It's not a resort, dude. Yeah, it's I'd not make, a I'd make a resort. Maybe. I'd and make it it's going to get fucked up by those war bats. There's a bunch of those war bats just swarming the area that Kong just kills. And the, these war bats are like picking up people. Apex employees are getting ripped apart. Yeah, but those Apex employees were assholes. Well, all of Apex is one big asshole. They're just trying to tap into the. Speaking of one big asshole, what? Nisa Gonzalez. Whoa, whoa, I don't want to. I mean, she's, she was actually a major bitch in this film. Her character was, but she's also incredibly gorgeous. She is. The last time I saw her was in Bloodshot. I believe she's also in I Care a Lot, that Netflix film. Oh, she is. Yes. Ooh, does she do any good in that? I think she plays a lesbian. Mm, good for her. Good for her. Um, but she gets killed in this one, so not. She good for yeah, her in gets this exploded. One. By Kong. Kong actually makes the best kill killing her. Well, that's because Apex is trying to uh, capitalize on the energy that is stored within the Earth's core, which is radiation, essentially. I think they're trying to, they're trying to study the radiation of the hammer um, and recreating it synthetically for Mecha Godzilla. Does that sound about right? Yes. Well, not not recreate. They're just trying to tap into it. They are trying to recreate because remember, they're like, we can duplicate it in this amount of time. That's the thing oh, that's yeah, like yeah, downloading. Yeah. They're like three D printing it, their version of it. But they didn't even test it. No. Oh, which a hundred percent. Homeboy made the biggest mistake of being like, D- just put it in Mecha Godzilla, and he's like, no, we got to test it. And like, no. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the most egregious. No, no wonder Mecha Godzilla killed him first. The the Asian guy that would tap into Mecha Godzilla yes. via the the headset, yes, inside of King Ghidorah's skull, which they're using the neural pathways that still work after his death. That Asian guy is the son of, and I don't know if this is gonna make sense to anyone or just me learning out. Is the son of the other Asian guy that was in the previous Godzilla movies that was trying to, he, the guy it, from Inception, yes, him. And he dies in the last Godzilla movie trying to revive Godzilla. Um, I do think it was interesting. I did read a little bit that um, One Will Fall was their tagline for this film. One Will Fall. And everybody was talking about, like, they're not going to kill Godzilla and they're not going to kill King Kong. So clearly the one who falls is Mecha Godzilla. There you go. That was the first clue that people... They're playing with their feelings, dude. Well, because it's too much... This monster verse is too much of a moneymaker for them to kill them off already, right? Unless they're doing trying to... They're, they're trying to do like a Batman versus Superman thing where they'll kill Superman only to be revived when Justice League comes out. But clearly they don't like doing that. Mm-hmm. Clearly. But... Same companies. Um, it's funny that you bring that up because Justice League came out on HBO Max as well. Mm-hmm. And was for a short amount of time the biggest streaming release in history, only to be dethroned by this film itself. And I keep seeing comparisons of this film and Justice League, and I don't think they're films that can be compared to. Mm-hmm. I think Justice League was built, designed, and sold to a different market and for a different audience. And Godzilla and King Kong is clearly built to subsize to to satisfy everybody. Yeah. Kids, adults, old, young, King Kong fans, Godzilla fans, Mm -hmm. you know, people who hate it, people who love it. Well, yeah, this movie itself was doing it all. It it was doing fan service for all of the hardcore fans that have been following Godzilla and Kong since, you know, the beginning of time. But, you know, also it was satisfying. People that just want to see two monsters fuck shit up i never thought i wanted to see king kong put godzilla in a headlock and body slam he does like an atomic elbow too like hulk hogan to him it's pretty intense i love it again the fighting is insane because godzilla fights like godzilla but king kong fights like a ufc fighter yeah like king kong is a trained fighter so you said you said earlier that godzilla if this is a real life thing and we're really pitting these two together he should just atomic breath him as soon as he sees him but the thing with kong is that he is way more agile than godzilla is but the atomic breath is so fierce it is but with the with the monsters that Kong has had to deal with, with just living on Skull Island and being the king of that entire island and all these monsters have been trying to take him out his entire life, he's learned some stuff. He's learned how to avoid atomic breath? Yeah. In this movie, he proves it. I, yeah. He uh, moves yes. fast and he could 
Did he need the axe then? Did he need it? It helped. Mm. It always helps in a fight. Mm. It's part. Yeah, yeah. If he didn't have the axe, he would have lost. I mean, he did he already would have been almost lose. Breath he was already death. pushed to the ground. Do you remember when he's coming down and he's got the axe? Yeah. If you didn't have the axe, that atomic breath would have hit him straight in the head. Yeah, it would have. But this is the. I think that Kong is a smarter is a smarter being wow. than Godzilla. Oof. Godzilla, at the end of the day, you're, you're pitting a, a lizard against like a, a, a mammal. A mammal that is... Oh, so you're, you're cold-bloodedist. Uh, you don't like cold-blooded animals. No, it's not that I don't like it, but, you know, just seeing what you're, science has taught so us in the past. You're warm blood supremacist. Uh, no, that's terrible. You're mammal, you're mammal supremacist. I could be in the middle of the spectrum. I'm somewhere on the spectrum in terms of how I side with mammals. Yes, I'm a dog person, but not a lizard person. I've never owned, a, you know, this is that's what it is, dude. Lizards are kind of gross and scary. We, we, we derived from primates, and that's that, and look at us. We're very smart and complex. I would much rather snuggle a puppy than a, a snake. Yeah, so, you know, that's, that shit's scaly. You want a warm fur on you. But Godzilla and King Kong. They made them side together with the common enemy by introducing a common enemy into the movie. Did you think that that was not going to happen? I ha- no, I, I knew that. I knew that was it. Because even in like other Godzilla films where Godzilla is the bad guy destroying the town, at the end he ends up being the good guy killing Mothra or killing yeah. whoever the bad... And same thing with... Well, not so much with Kong. Kong usually dies at the end of his movies. Does he usually? No. He did at the end of the Peter Jackson one. In the Peter Jackson one, was he brought to New York mm-hmm. and they went through that whole entire thing? They shot him down right off the Empire State Building. Oh, uh, so they weren't trying to make that a franchise. That was just going to be a standalone movie. No, I think Peter Jackson, like, that was his dream movie to make. He, like, tried to do a shot-for-shot remake in, when he was, like, uh, 13 on a Super 8 film. Mm-hmm. And so um, he was supposed to make it in, like, 97, 96, mm-hmm. 97, and then instead made Lord of the Rings. Boom! Not a not a bad idea. And then after that came out, they're like, "We'll pretty much give you uh, the keys to the society." Two thousand five. Yeah, and he's like, "I want to do King Kong." And they're like, "Okay." And Kong, King Kong was cool. I think we talked about Huge. this before. We both played the game on the PlayStation Two, which turned out to be a really good first person action game. There was supposed to be a King Kong game for this one movie. For this movie. Oh, I'm I'm sure I'm sure they're still gonna make it if they can. If, uh, I wouldn't imagine I, it. I would love to just, I would love to just be King Kong and, and beat the shit stuff. about anything. Yes, what this movie did wrong, though. Let's talk about the bad stuff. We already what? talked about the lack what? of character development. Okay, that's the only bad thing that I see. And also, there wasn't, the stakes weren't high enough for people. Oh, for yes. mankind. Yeah, they destroyed Hong Kong very nonchalantly. They're in the heart of Hong Kong and destroying the entire city. And they make a point to show us that there's people in the buildings. Like a couple of times they show mm-hmm. us so- shots from other buildings and there's people still in those buildings. Imagine the cleanup crew the for cars. the day after. There's like cars in rush hour traffic Dead. that they're destroying. Dead. There's at least one person in those cars. Like is Hong Kong ever going to go Pack to Don't ever Hong go back. Kong was? No, this movie ends and everybody smiles, and it's like, no, you guys have like trillions of dollars of rebuilding. Someone's to do. paying for this. Entire economies it's are apex completely destroyed because of this. Apex has to cough up the dough and has to repair. They're it. still destroyed. Yeah, that's not going to be fixed in one week. They didn't really take time to, and this is us. Once again, asking, asking questions. Asking too many questions. Do you have a best person on set award? Um, I want to give it to the special effects designers. Like, how can yeah, you not? I would want. I want to give it to the sound. The sound effects because we did see some very kooky sounds. Because I'm pretty sure Mecha Godzilla, when he first comes out, goes dun dun dun. Yeah. Um, but just the sound is a whole. I mean, it's a, what are these sounds? A 300-foot gorilla slamming a lizard into a building? How do you mm-hmm. know what that sounds like? Uh, they figure it out. And it, whatever they came up with, I loved. Because it worked? Yeah. Because it worked. This It was so... Music, too. Music was really good. The music... Junkie XL, I believe, was did it. Visually and just in terms of audio, just so Pleasing. appealing. Even the fight in Hong Kong with all the neon lights, lights and with uh, Godzilla's atomic breath. You see all of these the colors. Axe. He shoves the axe down mm-hmm. his throat. 
It's really, it's a really fun film if you can turn your brain off. Yeah, that's all you got to do. I mean, it's 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 not the best script out there, but you are watching two legends, two titans go at it. <laughs> you are watching an ape beat a lizard up <laughs> until until robot lizard shows up. Mm-hmm. So you know, take it with a grain of salt. Robot Lizard, I did like his Iron Man tactics of fighting, though, where he picks up Godzilla and, like, jetpacks him into the next building. Yeah. Or, like, flies him. You know, like, I, I did, I did like Mecha Godzilla's tactics. Yeah. Re- really good. And, you know, he was going to kill Godzilla until Kong came in there. Honestly. Mm-hmm. Kong is the king. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I thought this movie, the ending was a little rushed, though. What do you say? How would you have liked it to have end? I mean, there just needed to be. Would you have liked them to have not have been friends at the end? They weren't friends at the end. They were kind of friends at no, the end. No, he put down the axe. They still hated each other, but they respected each other. So they're not friends. So they're friends now. I don't think Titans. Yeah, Titans are always just going to have to do their own thing. They're never going to be companions. Hmm. I would have liked. My ideal ending would have been that Godzilla like dies from her wounds, his wounds. Mm hmm. And then, like, King Kong lives as King Titan, but then we see an egg hatch. Mothra's egg? Baby Godzilla. Oh, baby Godzilla's egg? Next Titan to come and take him take him away. Godzilla Jr. And it's just like a cycle, because isn't this all about a cycle of Titans yeah. killing each other for that alpha spot? Yeah. Yeah. It's all They're all just very territorial. And what if this next Godzilla has, like, wings, or, like, maybe, like, a big pair of tits, or, like, just, like, a really nice... <laughs> A pair of blue eyes or something. Oh, you want to see that kind of movie? I would like to see sexy Godzilla. Not not me. I would like to see Godzilla porno. I not, wouldn't mind seeing Godzilla it. porno. You said it. It's out there. It's out there. It's got to be. It's probably out there. I do think, though, that um, Godzilla would have a big pair of knockers on her. Okay, so girl Godzilla with a big pair of knockers, that's what you want to see? That's what we see in Matthew Broderick Godzilla. I don't like that Godzilla. and I've, I've He has lipstick and before. everything. I don't remember this. Bugles on his fingers. I don't think so. I don't think I've ever seen this. Um, and I hate I hate it. <laughs> you actually, you kind of like the fact that, you kind of like the idea of Godzilla with bugles on his fingers. No. You know what? I am now getting finally the mental picture of that Godzilla. I've been trying to think about it all day. That Godzilla looks like dog shit. It's terrible. And this Godzilla. That Godzilla doesn't. Yeah, that Godzilla does suck. This Godzilla is just amazing because it's. it's Big hips. It looks exact. Not exactly, but it looks very representative of the original Godzilla, but just done right. Done in a modern way. Yeah, done in a modern way. And this Kong is. Kong's got like a beard, like a like a LeBron James beard, like that very angled off you know what I mean? Like he's... I don't know if gorillas could grow beards. Kong has a beard. I don't know if it's a beard, dude. It's like lined up, bro. You think Kong has a barber? Go back and look at it. Kong has a lined up beard. You're telling me that Kong has a fresh fade and a lined up beard? You, on Skull Island, his second favorite place to hang out and underneath, besides that waterfall, second favorite place, barbershop. You're watching two different movies. First of all, you want to see Godzilla with the boobs and you want to see... You're thinking you're seeing Kong with a fade in lineup? I don't think so. Also, where's Kong's dick? It's somewhere, dude. I don't know where gorillas put... I've never seen a gorilla penis. So You've n- never seen a gorilla penis? No, I'm sorry. I've never seen a gorilla penis either. Not even at the zoo. I mean, just think about the angles in which they stand. It's always hidden, and it's fine. And I'm not really curious. Do they tuck it? Maybe. Because if I was at that angle, my dick would be out. Yeah, but we're. I guess we're a little different. I don't know. Once again, you're asking... Okay, this is the thing. If we're going to be asking questions when we shouldn't be, let's at least ask the right, the right questions. You're asking, you know, about, I don't know how you turned this movie into something like about titties and dicks. I just, I just, I've never seen a gorilla dick before. Well, that's all I really have to say. Yeah, I, that's all what I got. What do you rate it? Honestly. Five out of five. I give it a four out of five. You got to watch this film. You got to turn your brain off. So yeah. I could see why people would rate it just even the slightest bit. But it is fun. Yeah. It's exactly what you want. It is Godzilla versus King Kong. You could nerd out with it too. So something that I did yes. after I watched 
after I watched the movie, I watched like a bunch of YouTube videos. Um, Learn the Easter eggs with the Easter eggs. A lot of videos about like what you should know before the movie, <laughs> and you know, just that makes a hard movie to watch if that has a film that if it like comes with homework. Mm-hmm. It's not well. Don't think of it as homework, but if you want to. If you want to fully immerse yourself in the monster verse and just have just be I don't know, just it's it's cool to know that there are a bunch of different titans and Was the monster verse also the mummy? No, that's a different monster verse, man. Wasn't that also called the monster verse though? Uh wasn't it? Maybe. Wasn't it wasn't that also the monster verse? Yeah, I mean that's its own universe. The mummy, I think it, the mummy, and then they had like Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde in there for some reason. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Tom Cruise's mummy. Yeah, they the, called that the monster verse. The didn't bad they? mummy. Yeah, that was part of it the, because they called them monster that had a post credit <gasps> scene with Doctor Jekyll and well, not even post credit scene. Like he has a straight up fight with Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Mm-hmm. That's Great book, right. by the way. But they that movie was such a flop that they just kind of canned it. They canned that franchise right there and then. Me and my mother saw that. We walked down. We both said, I hate my eyes. That's how I felt about uh, The Rock's Hercules. Oh, yeah. That did suck. I hated that one. That was essentially the Samson story. That was not good. No. But you know what is good? Godzilla vs. Kong. Guys, check it out. Uh, I believe it's on HBO Max until April 30th. It's also in theaters if you live in a cool state. Yeah. But, you know, California is still... Actually, Not I did everywhere. see the opportunity. We could potentially go see this in theaters tomorrow. So we say that as if we don't have the opportunity to, but we do. We actually we are living in a place where we could see it in a movie theater. Yeah, things are um, opening up. So. so just guys, be safe, be smart, be be careful, and um, don't forget to check out our new merch on icbtb.com. Yeah, a lot of new merch. Alex is wearing the new baddie shirt right now, and sizes are going quick. We just had to reorder some, yep. and who knows if we'll reorder again after that. But if if the demand is that high, then maybe we'll deliver. Maybe. Maybe. Stand and deliver. Mm-hmm. Edward James Olmos. Mm, good play. Movie. Book. All right. Bye. Can't be that bad, though.